guess, uh, how's camp been and any adjustments you've made between, you know, now and uh, th in this fight? Uh, yeah, so last fight was um, the longest break between fights I've ever had. And this fight is going to be, in my UFC stint, this will be the shortest tenure between, tenure between fights. Um, so before I got in the UFC, I used to fight much more actively, like three to five times a year. But circumstances made it so that uh, it was hard for me to fight uh, more than once a year and then we had COVID and stuff so that's really the big change is just jumping straight back into fight camp and staying more active. Did that long layoff play a bigger factor in your fight, your last fight than kind of maybe you, you let on or maybe you didn't realize until you were actually in the fight? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, when I got taken down uh, in the first round um, it just felt so foreign. Like it was just that yeah, ring rust, that was really it. It was ring rust. My mind was just blank for two minutes. And then coach was just like, get, get, can I swear? Yes. Yeah, he was like, get the fuck up. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I just got up and stood up straight away. And I was like, man, I could have done that two minutes ago. But, yeah, that's ring rust. So, obviously, your opponent that you're fighting has uh, not a lot of UFC experience, but I think he has, what, 15 of his 16 wins have come by submission. He's a pretty high-level grappler. So, um, what do you make of the matchup you have ahead of you uh, this weekend? Uh, I mean, I've fought lots of guys like him, m more so before I got into UFC. Uh, my old game plan used to be Sprawl and Brawl, uh, famous, made famous by Chuck Liddell. And, yeah, it's just going back to my roots, really, in terms of how I'm going to approach this fight. Are you the first city kickboxing fighter on the card? Let's, are you the one that's, of all the city kickboxing guys, are you the first one? Uh, no, my very good friend and new... UFC alumni Kevin Jusset is, and then I'm immediately after him, and then Blood Diamond. So obviously Israel said like he wants to finish this card in spectacular fashion because you guys will set the tone. So what what has it been like in camp with everyone peaking at the same time? It's been phenomenal. With having we've had some amazing camps in the past when we're all on the same card, and I've witnessed some great things in those camps. But this camp, like, there's been a few sessions where it felt like none of us. I don't know how to describe it, but I guess it's like you do the whole training session and you don't feel tired the whole time and everyone's just pushing and you look around and everyone's the same. It's like this weird energy that just lifts everybody up and it's been like just a, a blessing to it, behold, really. Last one for me. Uh, in your last few fights leading up to it, you've been pretty outspoken of like what young men are going through back in New Zealand and stuff. And Israel's documentary just came mm -hmm. out. And he said that if you, if not for anything, even even if you're not an MMA fan, he thinks young men should just watch this documentary if they can pull anything of it. So, have you seen the documentary? And what did you make of that? And what he thinks? Yep, yep. I watched it uh, in. Auckland, we all went there as a gym and watched the New Zealand premiere, and I was so surprised by it. Um, before this, my favourite MMA documentary was um, Notorious by Conor McGregor, but this is just way more, he's way more vulnerable and way more real and open, like the real Israel that I know, and, and especially at this current time that we're in for, I guess, males in society, it's, I feel like it's so needed. And a lot of people can get inspired by it to go forward and move out of the, like a dark place and motivate themselves to do bigger things in the world. Yeah. Shane, I was going to ask you, man, I know you uh, mentioned on IG the last time you fought in Sydney, it was about five years ago and you were kind of on hostile territory and now you feel really welcomed going into this one. Take us into that a little bit and also, I suppose, the feeling of where you and your team is compared to back five years ago when it was a little bit different. Yeah, so funnily enough, I was kind of, I guess, in a way, the first CKB fighter to get in the UFC because Dan was already in the UFC before we all started training together. Um, so it was everything was new. It was all a new experience, but it was weird because I was fighting Alex Volkanovsky, who was kind of a mate at the time. Um, but it was the first time I've ever come out and been booed. And that was like a new experience, but I just, it, just, it, it was fine at the time. But from there, five, five or so years ago to now, it feels like we are really Anzacs. Australia and New Zealand, there's no, there's no um, animosity between us. Like we're just a unified front taking on the rest of the world. Um, and that's, that's awesome. 
And I know there's a few rumours floating around about potentially a card in Auckland next year. I just wonder, what would that mean to you to be able to potentially uh, have the FC come to Auckland and for you guys and for yourself to potentially be on a card on some home soil? Yeah, that's. I have to be on that card. Uh, we've had two uh, UFC Auckland cards and I have not fought on either of them. The last one I was a... Oh, actually, I was a spectator at both of them. Um, but I just... Yeah, I have to be on that card. And I think it would be great for... New Zealand MMA uh, for the scene, like the local scene, because um, to be honest, our local scenes. When I was coming up, when I was fighting, there were more, there were more fights, there were more promotions, and I just think maybe since COVID, that it's sort of slowed down a bit. So I'm hoping that that UFC Auckland card could help make some new promotions branch out or create some more fights for everybody to get get some fights on their record and then fight overseas instead of beating up each other. Shane, just over here. Yeah, right. So, Shane, obviously, you know, this is a big fight, big opportunity here in Sydney. Are you looking at this fight as almost an opportunity to hit the reset button on your career a little bit? Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, because... Um, I've never, you know, this is a new territory for me, being on a three-fight uh, losing stint. Um, and it feels like do or die for me um, with this fight. Um, I mean, I know I'm not yet in my physical prime. So for me, it's just, it's just trying to get out there and prove to myself what, what all the years of hard work that I've put in. And, um, yeah, I don't know if I answered that correctly, but... And, you know, talking on that pressure then, does it, you know, does it change your preparation at all in camp heading into this fight, whether it's, you know, additional physical work or whether it's, you know, working on the mental side of the game? Yeah, mainly the second part that you said, working on the mental side of the, of the game because um, we, as fighters, we're, like, almost living in that uh, sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight from day to day. If you train four times in a day, you've only got like an hour and a half between each training session. And in that hour and a half, it can t it's quite hard to get your nervous system back down. So my focus has been a lot on my, on my mental uh, preparation and, and trying to focus on the positive things about this because it can be very scary, I guess, if you look at it from like, oh, three fight losing streak. Um, Fighting in Sydney, big crowd, six people. Like you can, or you can let that overwhelm you, or you can let it motivate you and, and build you up and let that energy um, build you up so you rise to the occasion. Uh, Shane, um, obviously a teammate and friend of yours, Israel Adesanya, um, getting the win back in April against Alex Pereira. Did that add any extra motivation to you for this camp, seeing him get that win in, in that last fight? Yeah, one hundred percent. It was like that whole uh, finishing exchange was like an emotional roller coaster. It was a movie. Watching him get that calf kick and then back up against the fence, I was like, "Oh no!" Standing up on my feet, I had my son in my hands. I was like, "No, no, no!" And then whack, whack, he just drops him with that right hand. I ended up like screaming, and my son started crying. But I'm, yeah, I'm sure he knew it was all good things. But it, it was a, more of a reminder that we are. Uh, in a in a very special time by we I mean city kickboxing we we are part of a very special time that's happening right now in this sport and it's only a young sport it's only 30 years old but it just it motivates me to just be around the gym and and of just yeah to be more of a witness as well as a participant like it, it's a weird thing sometimes you know I'm in here doing this uh, fight card there's six of us but also once I finish my fight, I'm here to witness the greatness unfold from all my other teammates. Uh, just one more for me. Um, Kevin Doucette makes his uh, UFC debut this weekend, um, and he's a guy that we've known about here in Australia nice. for a little while. Um, but I just want to get your take and, and let, the, let the public know um, what, what Kevin's going to bring to the UFC. Kevin is a legit threat in every way. Um, I was surprised that he's only 30 because of his, like... 
technical knowledge in so many different parts of the game, I was like, man, he needs to get in the UFC fast because he must be pushing 38 or something. <laughs> Just because he's so skilled. He's so skilled. He's so strong athletically. Um, and from when he's come to the gym uh, like three or four years ago to now, his his game has become so well-rounded because we everyone knows he's a judo black belt, basically a jiu-jitsu black belt, but his striking and how he, he how he mixes all those parts of the game has really evolved and he's going to be a, a, a menace in the welterweight division. Just, just Cheer, bro. Yeah, just... Hello? Oh, I can hear you. Yeah. How the main event going to play out on, on Saturday or Sunday? I think it's going to be a lot like uh, when Izzy fought Paulo Costa. Uh, yeah, basically that. It's just it's gonna be a lot like Paulo Costa. Um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs>